Welcome, everybody, to the Breachers VRML Season 2, Week 8. My name is Nightfire with two E's, and today I'm joined by a yellow hat. Not a blue, not a purple, but a yellow hat this afternoon. Yellow, how are you feeling in today's matchup between Outlaw and Eternity? Hey, good to be here, Nightfire. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, this should be another high-level match, kind of like the one we had the other night between... Uh, Acer versus F3, but uh, as you mentioned, we've got Eternity versus Outlaw, and you know, Connoisseurs are pretty much in Eternity's favor here. They are ranked fourth NA, whereas Outlaw is ranked twelfth. But uh, you know, as we say in every cast, anything can happen. So I'll be <laughs> interested to see what these two teams come up with tonight. Yeah, I mean, the votes are eighty-seven to two. So you want to talk about a little favor on the Connoisseur side? Is nearly everybody going on? <laughs> to Eternity's side this afternoon on the voting end. But we're looking at stats. We're looking at, um, you know, match numbers. And there's there's a possibility. There's, I think, a, a certain path here for Outlaw to come out on top this afternoon. And it's certainly a big match for this Outlaw squad. They've been fighting hard throughout the course of this season. They've had a couple of tough matchups. I think their most recent one was a W uh, against Infinity. So now... Going up against Eternity, they are really hitting all of the E's <laughs> uh, with uh, with the last few weeks. They did lose to Beaver Tails the weekend before, but it's, uh, I don't know, the Outlaws are a team that have been playing pretty good so far this season. They're playing and winning at a high level in the, in the, in the local standings. You know, to be up 12th in NA is no easy feat. Uh, Eternity... Three, two, and three. I mean, three ties is crazy. I think that's that's one thing that really stands out to me is the fact that Eternity have a hard time getting two maps. Yeah, I mean, you know, Eternity is a squad that have played probably since the beginning of Breachers, and you know, they've always been a pretty formidable high, yeah. uh, you know, high rank squad. The three ties that they got uh, were against Wicked, and then uh, Fusion, which is another top five NA team. And then yep. uh, most recently, Olympus. So, I mean, it's, it is definitely interesting to, to see that kind of happen. But, uh, you know, Eternity, they again, they are a pretty tough squad. I think Outlaw will have their work cut out for them. But, you know, kind of speaking from a player's standpoint, too, you know, when you're kind of like, say, like 10th, 15th or whatnot, you get an opportunity to play against, you know, a top five team. I'm sure Outlaw, you know, win or lose today, they're going to be able to take a lot from Eternity. Yeah, I'm curious on what the roster is going to look like for Outlaw this afternoon. When we do look at it on the site, Rezzy K uh, not going to be on the roster today. Uh, still on cooldown from swapping uh, over from from leaving Outlaw. Interesting. They must have left and then yeah, rejoined. But... Something happened there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what happened there with Rezzy, but either way, they won't be on the roster here for Outlaw Squad, and we are still waiting on those lobbies uh, <coughs> players to jump into lobby, and then we should be getting in to our first map of the afternoon. But I mean, when we talk about what's at stake for Eternity, ranked fourth, a win here bumps them up into that sort of upper echelon space in, com in competition with teams like Acer and now F3 back into the fray. You know, I'm curious you know, if. When it, when it comes time for them to face off against Acer again, are they going to be able to compete? Because that's the real, t that's going to, I mean, that is, it's the, it's the, again, the looming uh, shadow of the North American region, this Acer team that is currently and still undefeated. Uh, although a tie besmirches their undefeated record, <laughs> they are still undefeated. And uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, especially when we think about Eternity needing to be in the top eight so that they can push, qualify into the postseason and then be one of two teams that gets flown out to play live on stage for, uh, for the North American Grand Finals at VRML Con on July 20th and 21st. It is, uh, the pressure is on every match, you know, and Yellow, I mean, I know you're playing uh, competitively in some other leagues, but I mean, you can imagine the pressure of, of having uh, uh, your team being flown out, sort of looming on every series. It, it's a test, I guess, for, for these teams, I feel like. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, this is 
for many of the players in you know breachers league or in some of the other sister uh vrml leagues like veil and x8 and whatnot this is their first real shot at being able yeah. to play live on stage and you know when you really think about that just in the, the scope of vr in general yep. there have been two other times in history that there's been like a you know in-person live tournament that you've had to qualify and beat other teams for yeah and it's it you know when you have that opportunity like and if especially if you go to the you know vrml con and you win vrml con oh. i mean that you're you're leaving <laughs> you're leaving such a legacy yeah. on the history of vr esports like when you really really think about it there's so much here that a lot of these teams would love to be able to achieve just to be able to say i played at this lan event you know i pl played and then won this lan event and you know beat 50 60 other teams like that's that that does give you a lot of street yeah. card there in terms of you know at least in the vr space so oh, it, and definitely I, something to work for yeah and if we really do uh, want to get optimistic you know years down the road when we're on espn doing the history of vrml <laughs> you know there's gonna be that uh but it'll, it'll, you know, it's like when you look back at League of Legends, it's, you know, their first Worlds was was so, it, it's just like a, a, a world apart from where they are now as an organization. And, uh, well, let's hope we get there. You know, I'd love to be in stadiums with VR Esports. Um, yeah. <laughs> for now, though, we're in a, my apartment and yours. <laughs> and we're watching VR Esports. And we're getting ready for Outlaw vs. Eternity with Outlaw still waiting on two to join. Hopefully they don't have any roster issues uh, as they do have, again, Rezzy not able to jump in today, but they have a full roster. So they've got seven on their roster. So they should be able to, 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 <laughs> to fill a team of five um, th amongst them. But uh, we are just waiting for two more to jump on to Outlaw's side. I think... They can, I want to say you have to have a sub and you have to play 4v5 if that's what you have to do. I don't think they can play a 3v5. Yeah, I think, yeah, if anything, they're probably just waiting on the last two to get in or whatnot, figuring yeah. out uh, picks and bands, and then maybe they have a specific roster that they have for, you know, a certain map or whatnot. You know, like this five plays, you know, ship and hideout for example, or like this five plays like factory. So it could be that it could just be sure. them maybe having issues, whatever, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll get it worked out quickly. <laughs> yeah, we will patiently wait to the start of map number one here on the desk. And I suppose <clears throat> as a good as time as any to shout out our sponsors. We do appreciate for coming into the VRML and supporting us in particular triangle factory with obviously the in-game gun skins. And oh, there are the two plover and femme. Uh, jumping in uh, but again with those in-game gun skins as well as uh, 10 uh, that the flying out our top two North American finalists to play live on stage uh, it is a huge amount of support that they're providing the VRML and we really do appreciate it um, the fact that we're able to do this with it with them is a, is a huge obviously thing that we're excited for here on the casting team too and um, it's only possible because of them and their support um, so we appreciate them. We're also sponsored by ProTube VR, offering some of the best haptic stocks in the market with the MagTube here that I'm showing off. I uh, highly recommend you check them out. You can use code ILOVEVRML at checkout to get a 10% discount. We're also sponsored by HyperX. You're hearing my voice on a Procast S right now. And uh, great quality products across the board from keyboards to uh, oh, there's the keyboard to uh, mice and obviously Mike's headphones. Uh, I, we really do appreciate their support to the casting team and to our North American finalists. They offer up some prizing. And so again, we appreciate HyperX for contributing in. They're also coming in with $2,000 in cash and, or excuse me, in hardware for giveaways at VRMLCon. So if you buy a ticket, you're likely to at least win back something in HyperX gear. You, you know, like you're, you're gonna, you could even, it'd be like, 
you can get a deal, okay? You can get a nice keyboard for, yeah. for, uh, for a $65, $75 ticket, okay? So think about that, all right, as, uh, as if you are going to head out to the con. Uh, we're really excited about those giveaways, and we really do appreciate HyperX for coming in and supporting us there. There's going to be a ton of stuff at the con. There's going to be booths, exclusive merch, potentially even some stuff that's going to be in uh, that'll <clears throat> reflect in game i don't know okay there's talks that's all i'll say but um for other games okay but, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for everything uh, yeah 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 <laughs> there's the, there's a lot to look forward to though for vrml con 2024 and i do recommend you buy your ticket now if you have the opportunity to be out there i think that covers our sponsors and just in time yellow because we are diving into map number one on hideout and we look at the stats i'm curious uh, where you stand on these stats for hideout what do they say for the outlaw and uh eternity squad oh gosh i got mixed i got i went to infinity there for a second it's gonna happen so much <laughs> I, I, it happens in my brain already but what do the stats yeah. say uh, on the site for us here all right, so Outlaw, they have played Hideout a total of 16 times in their history, and they've won it seven times, so that puts them at a 44% win rate. Meanwhile, over on the Eternity side of things, they have played Hideout 22 times in official matches and won it 13 times, so they are at a 59% win rate on this map. Dang. And with Hideout being one of the original three maps, I mean, I'm sure that both teams are well-practiced on oh, yeah. this as, you know, it's been one of the longer-played maps. But, uh, you know, we've got outlaw starting over on the defense and then of course eternity starting over on um enforces there so we're gonna see oh initial pick coming out from mind baker there does take a lot of damage but does get the headshot on the toxic drop and they are swayed in there penny packer going right into the site but gonna be walking to a stack a ghost and fam both picking up kills Ju emp does get planted ace takes out fam and now all of a sudden it's a two on two one player outside the window. This is actually a very interesting post plan coming out from the ace. They're going to be able to watch it, and he does take out Bishop. Oh, yeah, we do have, uh, worth noting, the uh, the visual bug here this afternoon where nameplates are not accurate on the bottom of your screen. There. So it was a 1v2 with EMP down, and now two alive on the attacking side, which is Outlaw as a Ghost and Plubra lock in that win it's a uh, unfortunate bug that happens randomly it didn't happen fortunately for the f3 acer match but it is happening here and so we won't talk about it too much other than to obviously remind you uh in the moments that it's wrong and it's pretty much always wrong so just don't look at it don't look <laughs> at these name tags in the bottom those aren't right the ones that you see in front on the screen um those are accurate those are showing this players we are seeing the huddle here coming in from outlaw they're, they're yeah. <laughs> pointing up to the to the to the spectator heavens uh as they do get ready for i think what's going to be a bit of a motivational cheer uh you know trying to get their yeah, team I mean, hyped up yeah i gotta know <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you know any round that they take off of eternity especially getting the first pistol round just having that motivation yeah. to start that's going to be really good for them and uh we see that they are just all on pistols right now nobody's really buying a vezin or anything i think they want to make sure that they are full on utility and e economy going into the next round and then we actually got mind baker and oh you can't Shoes trust to be on you can't trust those. Again, i can't those trust are all... yeah. <laughs> yeah, the kids are all... uh, maybe maybe we have Maybe we have people in rifles, maybe not. <laughs> I, but think, I think there's a Vezin and a Cadillo on the defensive side. I don't know who has them. Uh, it looks like Ewat and maybe a Ghost, yep, holding those rifles. Yeah. Um, so you can imagine that I, the way I think it's working right now is that Mindbaker and Juice are being represented by Ewat and... Okay, so you, you can see how it gets confusing. We're not going to put... <laughs> yeah, just don't focus on those loadouts. Ignore the bottom half of the Yeah, screen. yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And we'll just enjoy the action in front of us as Outlaw does get ready to hold down another A site. Juice with a beautiful swing on that pistol there. Catches one. Ooh, another pickup there. I don't know how Ace got that one while I was on the backside. As that was holding down B and a beautiful A. Juice pushes in to avoid it. Prosty takes half health and A site seems to be on the menu for eternity it's just a matter of when and where the utility isn't abundant so there's not a lot of frags toxic drop is going to push around and swing in shut down the emp plant but they also will go down and get punished 
for that aggression. And if they're not careful, both Femme and Bishop could get pinched by the remainder of this eternity offense. And Ghost still has that Vezin, so, you know, they still have the firepower advantage. And uh, I don't believe Eternity were able to pick up the Candela. Ghost is just patiently watching the flank, and uh, EMP does seem to be dropped over by the door. It's a pretty standard plan over on A site. Uh, Mindbaker is going to be going for the plant, and Pennypacker does pick the kill up on Bishop, and A's getting another headshot onto Ghost, and Eternity are able to pick up this uh, the light buy there. And so going into this small by round, it's interesting to see what happens. Ooh, that was a Kadio. They managed to carry through with them, so not exactly huge <laughs> on the economy front. But <clears throat> again, we can't use that. Actually, we can use a scoreboard to assess economy. Uh, the scoreboard is accurate, uh, as we do see Eternity uh, shown in blue there as the Enforcers and uh, the Outlaws as the Revolters in orange. The economy is in good shape, obviously, for Eternity off that big round when they're avoiding a buy there from the Aces side with that Cadillo. And I think they also maybe picked up that Vezin, so both rifles getting pushed through to the next round for the enemy team. That's basically the worst outcome you could have <laughs> when you go into a buy off of a round win. You kind of completely negate that pistol round win, and now momentum is very much in Eternity's favor. Uh, we do see, I think think full buys though from both ends i believe outlaws had enough in their pockets to be able to fully invest in this next round but uh, this is our first full buy round this is the big one so we'll decide where that momentum is because eternity could really start to run away with it here with another win yeah and i'm looking right here i mean ghost has to be really careful with how far they swing out because you know that outside head peak that eternity could hold right now it's so dangerous to peek into even if you're not aware which you know ace could potentially see ghosts back here but uh it looks like the rest of eternity could be going over towards garage there and uh we could be seeing a couple hatch hits and we do actually have a lurk over on outlaws with femme leaving leaning over the stairs trying to make sure nobody gets around nobody gets down below through the stairs but uh we hear some hatch drops Zorge gets taken by eternity um and Outlaw right now, kind of holding on. Juice picks up the first kill. <clears throat> really nice side angle there, and Ace gonna be flying in here. Active camo on, they'll find another on to Bishop, and just like that, ooh, a disconnect, unfortunately, putting a bot onto the playing field, but it's Europe and Femme. Plubra reconnects, taking control of their character at a good time to make it a 3v3 as the Femme comes flying in, picks up a double kill. It's a 2v2, they'll go down in a flash. Oh, and I don't have the accurate uh, kill feed there. I got caught. I got caught up in the inaccuracy of it now, as there was three left alive for eternity. But a uh, okay, we got. I got to break the habit. We got to use our our visuals. Oh, okay. We got to use what's in front of us okay. only. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a, a solid round from eternity. Another win uh, in their pocket. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Eternity just really good at playing off of each other. You know, even if one of them gets picked, there's somebody right there to get the trade. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately that's what's going to take them ahead. That was a nice double coming in from Fen, But even then, you know, in a 1v3 with the bomb planted in garage or in uh, the main part of B there. And, you know, with them be able to watch it from outside. That's a really hard retake to do on this map. And ultimately, I mean, it the odds of him being able to win that probably not super likely. But, you know, again the double does get us a little bit excited there yeah, but yeah, um, ultimately 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 eternity just able to take that round yeah and a solid job from them on that front as well as we do get into another top floor obj right back to it for round number four and club bro, maybe looking for some early action and they'll find it picking up a very early kill maintaining control of a site quickly vaulting down avoiding mind <clears throat> from catching them out just barely, though, as Ace takes a bit of a pause before advancing forward, and Eternity is set up for the Ace type push, but can't make their way in just yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, that opening pick coming out, that's really, really good for Outlaw there. And the fact that he was just able to get away just before the window got open, that's insane timing. <laughs> it is very fortunate, and there's still a big threat down there. Magazine got thrown <laughs> from Toxic Drop to try and bait them out there. I don't know, it's just a mag from Proxy. Oh, and a nade there isn't bait. It catches Proxy out. A beautiful toss from Bishop as Mindbaker rotates around to where the first death was. 
to pick up the EMP in Eternity. Let's take a look. Have three to the four of Outlaw. Yeah, and you gotta wonder if they're considering rotate here. I mean, they have opened up A, but you know, Outlaw there stacked up on A. And I think Eternity are just waiting for one of Outlaw to peak. All Outlaw has to do here is just you know, keep it cool. Don't try to take any unnecessary peaks or fights or anything. And uh, your op actually able to take out Penny Packet there. He's gonna be the sole holder of B site, but Fen does come in and they're gonna spam the wall. Op picking up another kill, and all of a sudden now for Eternity, it's a one on four for Mindbreaker to try to win. He does pick up Fen, brings it to a one versus three. They are getting a little bit antsy. You don't need to necessarily take these one on one fights. He's got a minute 20 to work with, but you know, at the same time, they just kind of have to hope, or Mindbaker has to hope that Outlaw tries to peak him one on one. But I think Outlaw are aware of that fact at this point. They're just kind of taking it easy. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's a minute left. 1v3. Vezin in hand, I would say to just eco it. Just save the Vezin, bring it with you into the next one. They don't need the eco, though, and your op is going to peek out there at the right time, catch Mindbaker. Not watching and scoop up that kill. Puts Outlaw into a 2-2 spot and a big round win. Not to say that the economy of Eternity is, a, is in any bad state. So should be another full buy round for round five. But we're tied up here. And that's, I, I, I think it's a better outcome for Eternity right now than Outlaw. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, Outlaw, they've gotten they've gotten two rounds, which is good for them. But uh, based on at least matches that I've historically seen yeah. on this map, you're you're gonna want as many rounds on the defense as you can. Uh, and but ultimately, I mean, Eternity, you know, they could turn this into a four-two. It could go three-three. There's there's so many different possible outcomes. And I mean, for both teams, it's truly important to win this round because uh, with the next round being the last round, the economy is gonna be very important. Yeah. You see. Uh, your op and bishop would probably have enough to buy next round, but you know might not have enough to buy Vezins for their teammates should they lose. And then, even then, over on Eternity, their economy, they're full investing into this as well. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Well, indeed, as we get in to round five, Eternity looking to break the hatch of Garage. As Mind Baker is on the Overwatch, they're aware of an audio transmitter off of some good drone work. So that doesn't give away any positions. They don't get caught out by any wall bangs, except for when Plavra <laughs> decides to shoot and catches Proxy in the head. And a unfortunate uh, down there for the Eternity squad, down into a 5v4 now. Another drone will come up to finish doing that drone work as they've already identified a trip mine and a static emitter there. I won't really get a whole bunch more of it other than Bishop being tucked in. I don't know. I guess you can identify Blood, bro, but it is all pretty standard meta position, so it's the spots you should expect your opponent to be in. And you can expect to toss a good nade right on top of Blubra to catch them out. These trip mines still a major threat, but not until Mindbaker takes some shots out of through the smoke. Bishop decides to push, but the smoke at their back, and they'll go down. Juice going to follow up with maybe some more action here as they lose their teammate over the side, and we're into a 2v2 on site. I mean, now as soon as you say that, Ace picks up Fan with another headshot. Now it's Toxic Drop versus two, and uh, I think they're doing a little bit of Minesweeper here as they did destroy one mine, but they haven't gotten the other one. And with those gunshots, they should be at least aware as to where Toxic Drop is. He's trying to spam through the wall. Minute 28 left on the clock. Uh, Eternity have plenty of time. I think might be even waiting for Juice to recover a little bit of health there. Some gunfire still being exchanged. Ace holding that angle as Juice is going to be able to get that EMP down. But Toxic Drop going to be rotating here all the way around. And will they be aware of the flank? Hit into the smoke and Ace catches a gets a bullet to his face and Eternity able to pick up that next round. Yeah, the question was, will they be ready for it? And Ace was very much almost waiting for the rotation. After they got the plan uncontested, the the math was done <laughs> on the Eternity side. And a very good read to get them a point up here, 3-2. And like you said, the economy in a bit of a tough spot here for the losing squad outlaws. I don't know. Let's take a kind of a guess here. I don't think think they'll be able to fully equip themselves with rifles. I'm seeing 
two pistols, uh, maybe even three. Uh, and so, they, yeah, it's going to be a limited offering on the outlaw defense side. Uh, an eternity having a basement objective of all objectives, I feel like when you have an advantage on loadout, it can really kind of shine on this, OB, uh, this OBJ. Yeah, I mean, we even see, I believe it's Op over on the Cadilla there. And again, Bishop only on a pistol to try to make things happen here. And uh, yeah, this this round, of course, or the last round was very important for economy. And you're seeing exactly why. You want to have as much util and as many guns as you can. And uh, that's what outlaws have to work with. But uh, main door does get breach over on B. And they don't, outlaws don't actually have anybody on B. Perhaps they're playing it for a retake or something here. Fem does go over, and they actually are trying to fight a little bit more for storage control, but Ace able to pick that first headshot on Defend there, opening things up for Eternity, and Bishop waiting patiently with a nade there. Ooh, Roxy scoops up one on site, and I think you were right on the retake concept, but they're having a tough time executing on it now as they're down to just two on defense. Glitch up and Glover holding things down on the outside of the site, no less and catching plenty of heat for it. Club Row throwing up their hands, <laughs> saying, what is, what is there to be done? Well, there's a kill there to be caught. But lots of shots going through these walls on the Club Row. Well, it's going to swing, catching Proxy Juice, able to find the refrag in Eternity on their offensive set. Take it up 4-2. That is a solid start to map one for this Eternity team. And, well... At least they're, they're not heading to a tie yet for map one. It's still on the table. I'm not going to calculate it out by any means, especially mm -hmm. considering Eternity, or I would say maybe the tie. I got to wonder what the most ties is, because three is a lot. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like yeah. it might be up there um, for the most ties uh, this season. But either way, they are in a comfortable lead now. They go defense. We swap sides, reset economy, and... I don't know, a real opportunity for Eternity to snag a quick three defensive rounds and get themselves an early map lead. Yeah, I mean, this pistol round is, of course, going to be most important here as, uh, you know, it'll set the pace for the second half. And, and if Eternity are able to pick up the pistol round, I mean, they might even walk away at the next round and then they're one map or one round off the of map point there. So, yeah. I mean, if Outlaw are able to take the pistol, then, you know, we could potentially see a tie. We could potentially see it go either way. But, you know, either way, we have a top floor breach here going in for uh, the first round of the second half here. We see some nice drone work once again coming out from uh, Outlaws there. And, uh, you know, they're going to see what they can do there. Uh, don't know how much information they got as most of them are on the roof. They've been kind of shooting around and... Uh, I think that drone might have finally gotten taken out, but they were able to drop down through the hatch, so it's looking like they're going to be favoring over towards A here. A has been on the menu every time they've pushed this objective, although now they are the ones pushing it, so uh, a little interesting to see the rotation on the bottom floor coming in from the ace. It's slow and steady, but if it's pushed at the right time, it could be a big bottom floor flank it's got a couple of kills club rust scoops up one on objective really good shooting with that pistol there to catch one out in three quarters cover can't get juice but does tax the shoulder <laughs> toxic drops gonna try and swing it from the side and a one-two punch from mind baker and juice does some great work toxic is out here mind baker trying to capitalize on the grappling audio but can't and we're into a 3v4 with the four left alive on obj Oh, and here's the flank from Ace. Shut down. But as you say that, yeah, Op takes him out. And, you know, I wouldn't count out Outlaw just yet this round. I mean, two of the players over in Eternity are half health or lower. Sure, one of the players in Outlaw is also low health as well, but uh, it really can go either way. All it takes is one well-placed headshot. And uh, the EMP is still over towards A. Penny Packer trying to make something happen here, trying to at least... You know, gain as much map control as they can for eternity there. Op looking the wrong way, and perhaps you gotta wonder if Penny Packer will push out or if they'll just hold patient. And I mean, I think that's something eternity is good at is just being really patient. But as I say that, Penny Packer swings, gets Op, Toxic Drop, able to pick up the kill there, and now it's a one versus two, literally one HP and a dream. All these players just dead to one headshot. It's that close. <laughs> it really is. If they can hit the one-two tap, 
and find those shots first. Toxic has a path th through for the comeback, but it could be Eternity taking their 5-2 pistol round in the second half here, and like we were saying, that could spell <laughs> for Outlaws. There's one of the headshots. They almost catch Juice, just barely missing over the top as Juice ducks back down. 25 seconds left. The MP hasn't been planted in Toxic. Catches the kill. They didn't need to find the fight, but they got it anyway. Toxic gets the EMP. Are they going to get the plant, too, for the extra cash? Wow. With two seconds left, what a round to celebrate as the arms go up. That is huge for Outlaw. Yeah, I mean, that was as well played as he could have done it right there. He was able to he was able to isolate the two fights. I think he might have even caught, like, he must have caught, like, the knee or the leg or some sliver of the first player's body, and then, you know, it was just whoever could land the first headshot, and uh, the Outlaws player was able to do it, and getting that, you know, they've won both pistols. That's really, really good for them. Yeah, they have won both pistols, but that also does mean that when it comes to the rifle rounds, they have gone to eternity more than not. So once we get there, we'll have to see if they will be able to continue on with these round wins and ultimately put four more rounds on the board on offense. Not an easy thing to do. It definitely would be, in my mind, a failing <clears throat> on Eternity's side to defend effectively if that happens. But also, Outlaw could just kind of turn it on here on offense and start to look real coordinated because... Uh, well, that was a solid pistol round, like you said, and now we get a little bit of a show of what they do with an advantage with one, two rifles being bought in here on offense. That is not a uh, small investment. No, I mean, look at this aggressive defense coming out from Eternity, though. I mean, they're tr really just playing off of trades. You know, Ace hidden in the corner there. Over to his left, he has his uh, teammate there. Ace is going to be forced to swing out. It's immediately taken out, but the question is, are they going to be able to check Mind Baker here? Are they going to think to do that? Barbara picking up a kill. Proxy getting taken out. Bishop taking out Mind Baker, and all of a sudden, just like that, it's a one versus five for Eternity, and it's juice left over on the Eternity squad. Jeez, that's, uh, well, one way to try out your eco round and get it done quick while you're on defense, as they do... Try to extend early, like you said, but Garage gets completely captured. Juice is at this point looking to do damage. Just find a kill or two with Plub right here and a rifle in hand. They won't do much. And Juice goes down. And, uh, well, I spoke too soon for the tie <laughs> being a reality because 6-6 six, six is definitely on the table right now as a possible scoreline for these squads. I think... Yeah, full buys for Eternity, full buys for Outlaw. So our first rifle round of the second half and two rounds into the hands of Outlaw. So economy and advantage is in their favor. They've got the utility to push into this objective. They're not going to find a lot of resistance with static emitters or trip mines or audio transmitters because they don't have the extra cash to invest into it. So it's going to be pretty much a straight-up firefight for the most part. There's a grenade or two into the hands of, uh, I think Fem has one there uh, on their pockets. Also one in the hand of Penny. And I mean, we talked about it before, but utility, almost a, uh, I mean, it's the true tool especially of at a the top tier team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially, yeah, especially as you just said, at the highest level. I mean, we've already seen some very nice grenade kills coming out from both teams here. And, you know, if you're able to open things up with the grenades and, you know, not even have to fire a bullet, you know, that that really just puts you ahead of the game there. And so this round right here is a must win for either team. You know, it's going to set the pace of the late game. If, if, in, if uh, Eternity win this one, you know, they could potentially sweep ahead. But if... Uh, if Outlaws are able to win it, I mean, then the pressure's on Eternity yeah. there. Yeah, it really is. It'll be three rounds in a row in their pocket. The fourth one likely to go into their hands because of the economy being in shambles off of another loss for Eternity. So a 3-0 start here into the back half does actually get that comeback as a possibility. For Outlaws, Plumbra catches the ace, and Mindbaker is here on the short corner. They'll pop out to scoop up Toxic, dropping off before going down to a nade, losing one over one over the top, puts us into a 2v3 with Juice, and who else? Penny backer, what the heck just happened? Penny catches a double one-two tap with the Cadillo from the back line, and Juice rotates in for the flank. It's a round into Eternity's hands. 
but that was not what I was expecting. Yeah, very quick round. I I pretty much I don't think they checked Penny Packer like his location on. No, I think didn't. he was just able to walk away with some very nicely placed headshots from the Cadillo, and that's I mean. At that range, you don't see too many long-range engagements in breachers, but yeah. you know, from you know, all the way back corner to bedroom, just being able to get those shots in, and not being traded out either. Penny Packer did their job, and I mean, you know, even having a look at the scoreboard too. I mean, both teams, you know, it, it's pretty even. I mean, Ace of course is a little bit higher in kills than the rest of the Eternity squad, but I mean, everybody over on Outlaws. They're doing their job, you know. They're, you know, either almost positive, breaking even, or a little bit above positive. And, you know, when you have an even team contribution like that, I mean, that's, you know, that's a sign of a good working team right there. That's that's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, it is. It certainly is. You can have successful wins with stacked kill, to kill deaths on one player sometimes, too. It sometimes is the way the cookie crumbles at a high level, but... Uh, yeah, the good spread, to your point, it does show that everyone is getting into these fights, that everyone is participating in the action, and that's usually an indicator of good teamwork. So I, I do agree it's a nice spread coming in across the board there yeah, for Outlaw. And it's, and it's not like anybody on Outlaw is having like an egregiously bad game at all. You right. know, every, like I said, everybody's contributing. So... Um, as we get into this round here, anyways, I mean, ooh, Ace taking a little bit of damage there. Is he, is he gonna go for it? Oh, Ace is able to get out, but the question is, you know, is he gonna go for the reach out there? Doesn't does even swing. see Plumbra with that active camo tucked into the corner and gets absolutely taken out. Bit of an over aggressive maneuver there, but another pickup from Penny Packer back on the site as A is what's uh, being currently pressured. And look at Penny, they are on a huge flank here, trying to hit the back line. They catch another, not before going down though, by Toxic Drop. Uh, ultimately positive one for two trade there from Penny to kind of salvage the round and keep things even 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, you know, both teams are getting their trades right now. And, you know, um, it's looking like Eternity do have the health advantage here and uh, they do still have a good amount of map control. Clubber trying to see maybe if he could catch a player in B, maybe to open up that rotate a little bit. Uh, he's leading the charge with that EMP, which is a bit of a risky play overall. But, I mean, you know, he was able to get a kill or two. And, uh, you know, right now, Outlaw's just trying to see what they can work with. Uh, I believe Toxic Dropper, whichever player was to our left there, was able to get that heal off. So now Outlaws are going to be able to have that health advantage. And the wall on A is foamed. And... I, th I think outlaw here they really they have eternity scrambling a little bit and, you know their defense is a little bit split now because eternity is i would think is anticipating a rotate here but you know 45 seconds left bullets flying through the uh through the b wall there and it's looking like they still want to commit to that rotate but you know they don't have a lot of time to make a decision yeah, this uh, outlaw squad needs to move as Mindbaker catches Plub and a quick refrag, a one for one back over to A. I like the fake out towards B. Maybe that was the plan, trying to draw them to B, detonate, and then swing back to A. As now Juice and Proxy are trying to retake on the site. Juice and Proxy alone against Toxic Drop and Neurop as we go into a 2v2. Toxic gonna get that EMP plant down, no utility to come in here so no nade threat for toxic but look at how close juice has worked up here as toxic tucks into the very tight corner juice will catch one toxic scoops up another tries to pop up for juice and juice fends off the push a beautiful play from them as they sprint over to the emp to defuse it with plenty of time left and eternity go to map points off of a very big clutch there yellow hat yeah i mean that that's literally just the case of he could have aimed a little bit higher and hit that headshot and juice just barely able to survive that fight there i mean i was worried that juice was gonna pop over the the desk and uh be able to get the kill there but you know uh what's his name over on uh outlaws was just able to sneak on by and actually secures the kill on the rotating player from connector and i mean the you know it really it really is you know i do have to give props to outlaws here they you know 
the connoisseurs said 82 to one oh, for this game to go yeah. in their pretty favor. <laughs> and, you know, even, even if it, you know, eternity does win this one, I mean, outlaws are bringing it, you know, pretty dang close on these rounds that came yeah. down to a one V one. I mean, it, you know, again, it still could be anybody's game. I mean, they are outlaws are a little bit, you know, not as good on economy right now. We see one player over in the RCP, but even then, I mean, uh, Ace is on. Ace seems to be on a Cadilla, and so both these teams, they're not, you know, all five Vezins and max out utility. They're working with what they got. Yeah, they are indeed an outlaw. Don't have a lot here to work with, unfortunately. I think they got two SMGs in their arsenal, but out of all objectives, this is a pretty tight one. I guess everything in here uh, on this. Uh, uh, on this map is a pretty tight objective. There are some long angles too, like we're talking about maybe what some of the longest you could get in the game of breachers uh, outside of some other, I guess maybe trying to make it happen. But on the B site, a long line, Penny Packer taking a decent angle here over this long hallway, has the Cadillo in hand no less. So really will be a challenge of long range for short range if they do decide to push with the SMGs. Yeah, he's going to be picking up the first kill on the bishop, and that's going to be a good start over for Eternity there. And it looks like one of the other players over on Outlaws is pretty low on HP as well. And uh, something to note that, again, you only see really in VR games with Penny Packer sitting on the box there. You can see that, yeah, they're shooting right-handed, but they seem to be peeking out of their left eye and holding like a left-handed angle there as they drop your up. And, you know, being able to do that, that makes that, that, makes that you know, that fight right there just way more difficult to take if you're an enforcer. Oh, <laughs> Proxy kills themselves with a grenade uh, on the back end, and it puts it into a 4v3. The uh, first kill from the Outlaws, a team kill or a self kill. Penny almost thinking about throwing the nade, and it could have caught two if he had thrown it earlier, but decides not to, and a pheasant gets transferred over to Penny now. So they can properly defend as Mind Baker does catch Flubra. Inhalation Nade comes in, but I, ends up bouncing off the light. I don't think Penny was looking to do that. I wanted that to go a little bit farther. Either way, nobody from Outlaws, meaning Toxic Drop and Family, only two left alive, are going to be pushing down that hallway just yet. A minute left on the clock. EMP in the hands of one of these players. So they do have the option of trying to rotate to a different objective site than B but they would run into some dangerous elements there as the ace is trying to prep for this swing, and they're ready for it as they catch out them. Toxic has to get the refrag and can't before they'll go down from the ace. A beautiful double kill that locks in map number one for Eternity, 7-4. to four. Yeah, honestly, GG's to Eternity there, and GG's to both teams, but Eternity, you know, overall it seems like their teamwork a little bit more coordinated yeah. and i mean they just kind of had the guns a little bit more you know they're able to win a lot more of their fights and uh, you know it was back and forth at the beginning and then i think eternity they were just able to you know regroup refocus and uh you know they were able to pull through ultimately i mean that's what makes for a team in the top five really you know you have to be able to fight <laughs> and win despite you having adversity or losses that are hitting you that are unexpected and eternity definitely showing that they are capable of fighting when the, those score lines are are down and again a great comeback from them outlaw came in like you were saying earlier very strong today i mean much i think performing maybe much better than people were anticipating on those connoisseur votes but we do go into map two with a lead into eternity's favor and so they could take this series in two maps if they have anything to say about it i think we may be going into a potential timeout for the outlaw squad as i see two more have left from outlaw hopefully they will rejoin here shortly and we can be jumping in uh, to map two once the players are ready but a quick shout out to everyone stopping in hanging out and enjoying the action this afternoon we do appreciate you all for tuning in a decent crowd stopping by please do hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel 
if you can. We really do appreciate that support, and a lot more content is coming on this YouTube channel in particular. You may have seen my Mastering the Meta videos. I'll be doing more of those, but also some interesting interviews and deep dives into certain plays and teams. And uh, again, I recommend you subscribe so that you get notified when those YouTube videos go out and uh, tune into those. We love the feedback. We appreciate the feedback on those. We're trying new content, and so hopefully that will uh, lead to uh, more folks tuning in and, and, and watching our YouTube stuff. I think we may go to a intermission. I don't know that we're resetting or doing any lobby stuff technically, but it does certainly look like we're into a timeout at this stage. So uh, we will take a brief break here and we come back. We'll be diving into map number two for Eternity versus Outlaw. Don't go anywhere. Except and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, jobs that's real big. Say trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Again, flying out, rifle in hand, catches one, two, three. Oh no! Big Blue is right on the top lane. If there's a double kill that comes in from Cozy, can get to the EMP inside. Two fires. Oh my god! No! Snap line! Four, three! Oh. Oh.
perfect timing as we are back for round number one on map number two. If you're just tuning in, map one went seven to four to Eternity, a solid performance from them. But we now head to Arctic for map number two. And let's dive into the stats. Yo, what do they say? Ending. What's the what's the, what are the what's the statistical analysis? All right. So for our squad over an eternity, Arctic they've played it a grand total of six times this season. They've won it four times and played fifty rounds. However, over on uh, Outlaw side of things, they have played Arctic six times and they've won it five times and played fifty eight rounds of time. So this map being. Uh, over 50 percent even over 66 percent like that's a two pretty to three win rate for for both these teams so i mean even with the only six games that they've played on this map for this season i mean both these teams seem to be doing pretty well on this map so we could be seeing another pretty even match here so um, let's it. get into this pistol round. <laughs> eternity like i said on the attack and outlaw on the or excuse me outlaw on the attack eternity on the defense uh, a reminder too that those name tags not likely to be accurate on the bottom. They're like they're accurate on what we see in the in the front of our screen, but on those corners, uh, they're a little bit inaccurate. As you see, Penny Packer went down, but it represents the ace going down. So, <laughs> a perfect example. But keep that in mind. Don't not to look at those. Instead, we'll occasionally flash the scoreboard. And the great out players are the dead ones. An easy way to kind of determine what is alive and well. Toxic Drop is not one of them. They are very much dead off of a nice toss from Mindbreaker Bold down the long alley. Another one's coming. Oh my, that could have been huge if it hadn't bounced and had gone down the long hallway. A nice pickup from Ace. Puts Eternity into a good spot. 4v3, 3v3 off of a good refact from Plubra. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> like, like we saw last game, I mean, both teams are getting their trades and, uh, you know, Outlaw, they're having a good start here. They brought it back three to three, to three here. And, uh, you know, even Eternity, they lost a player right off the rip, and uh, they were able to recover, at least for the time being. But minute and a half left. Uh, both teams have one good player as Mindbanker picks up that headshot onto your op, now bringing it to a two-on-three for Outlaw to try to do something here. But Eternity seemed to be holding this one down. A really good back and forth over this site and a really good hold from Mindbaker to prevent this team from being able to push. They are still the key threat in this outlaw team working up towards their objective. And it's honestly shutting down the entirety of this offense before they can really commit to anything because they can't push to the static emitter. And so they have to connect on a Mindbaker, and as long as Mindbaker has this tiny little peek crack to peek through, they've got a slight advantage in terms of when they can check and peek. And so it's just being very well played by Mindbaker right now on the defense to hold this side down. And well, it's what you'd expect out of the top squad. <laughs> Eternity continuing to look good as Mindbaker and Ghost. Continued to scratch each other with the bullets. A full-on fight on the other side. And off of a reload, Toxic Drop finds the kill. It's an opportunity for an EMP plant as Juice puts the headset back on, picks up their pistol, and misses the shots <laughs> onto oh Plumbra. I don't know what was happening there, but Juice is back. I think there was a bot in at one point, and so Juice, I don't know, is defusing now. Mindbaker is here. Finds the kill. Ghost is nowhere in sight. And an interesting round, to say the least. That ends with the map, or the point, excuse me, going into the defensive hands. And what? A double kill with a collateral at the end? That was, I, That's the strangest round I think I've cast. Uh. I was just, I was just kind of speechless for that last thirty seconds. I mean, Juice really just said, "Ao eternity." I'm gonna just go AFK for the round. You can, uh, you guys can handle this. And then proceeds to come back as the bomb's getting planted, doesn't get checked, chases the guy out, defuses, and then outlaw outlaws is just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna get a collateral here at the end." What? That was. Uh, I don't know anymore. That was weird. <laughs> 
That was weird, but it goes the way of eternity, however odd it was. And the defense taking that early pistol round does mean that they can double by with two rifles getting picked up, two Vezins, no less, no Cadillo into the hands of Penny this time. And uh, I, I liked to see how effective, that Cadillo was quite effective. Uh, I think it was a thing that we and Penny had talked about in one of our interviews at some point, you know, the possibility of the Cadillo being utilized and oh, man, there's so much to this game that could change that would completely change how this game, how, you know, the meta with a, with a few credit adjustments. The proxy picked up a huge kill, a double on the ghost and blow. Toxic ducks the nade and out the gate an early 5-3 lead for Eternity. Yeah, so two nice picks coming out from the Eternity squad there, as you mentioned, and as we just saw here. Toxic Drop not really able to do too much of anything. He does have this tight angle right here where he could potentially catch an Eternity player getting aggressive. And as we see, Ace is trying to see if he can... Oh, the timing, though, and Ace sprint peaks the corner and is going to get the information at least, but is doing a very good job of just being restrained and not... <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mindmaker's the one that catches the kill and another weird trade. <laughs> As Yurok flies in, catches Ace unaware. A nice pickup on the backside, Femme. Thinking about swinging over. Proxy hearing their footsteps and Femme running into two rifles, not just one on that corner peak as Yurok has abandoned their initial push and going to be rotating over towards Femme most likely. Yeah, I mean, that's not something that you really want to peek into when you only have pistols. But even then, again, your op and Fem, they're going to be... They got the two rifle players right there, and the two rifle players are just staying right on top of each other so that even if one of them does go down, the other one's there to get that refrag and doesn't... You know, they don't lose a rifle for free because a rifle going into the hands of outlaws here, not something that you want to happen. And so oh, yeah. proxy, proxy and linebaker, they're just double peeking here as they are good teammates towards each other. Minute left. My Baker just trying to go for the, the quick snap pre-fires there. But your op and Femme both don't really have too much health to work with. And uh, you know, it's just gunfire back and forth here. A note as well when we go into first-person perspectives, those are also wrong names. <laughs> so, uh, oh, boy. yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's a lot broken. But when we're in third person, you can trust what you see is Femme. <laughs> Tries to challenge Mindbaker and Proxy down the hallway, and it is Mindbaker that catches the kill. And look, it's Mindbaker looking at Mindbaker. Isn't that a mind? <laughs> Doesn't that bake your mind? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, either way, a 2 0 start for Eternity. Pretty strong. Our first full buy for both sides coming in here, and Outlaw going to be tackling the middle of Arctic with their rifles in hand. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I, trying to think arctic is still an unknown to me i still don't really know where it lies in terms of advantage on side i've been saying it's 50 50 and i do feel like it is so i wouldn't count outlaws out by any means i really do feel like there's opportunities for the offense to win if executed on, if they execute on the plays effectively look at juice going afk again I think, especially with, you know, issues, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, especially with this map only enough for the past four months as compared to the other maps right. being out for a little bit longer. I mean, I feel like the meta is still kind of developing, especially with some of the, you know, some of the recent changes with, you know, weapon balancing and whatnot. But um, again, it's looking like Juice taking off the headset there for a sec and then, you know, he's back in the game. But uh, we are getting our first rifle round fully started here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Juice bought a rifle. I'm guessing they're having tech issues. It looks like they're trying to interface outside of the games menu <clears throat> and fix something. So, unfortunate little hiccup there. But hopefully they can get it sorted before Outlaw decide to push as Bloodrust scoops up one. A real, this is again a pretty long angle uh, to take up here. But it is one that's commonly defended and as we see here static emitter is thrown down to deter the full advance yeah, and I think even at this range like, from the range that we're at the camera right now to where that one uh, defender is playing 
I think the Vezin is not a one-hit headshot there. That's like the one time that maybe you prefer Maruri or Kandilo, but even then I know the Vezin has gone through a few changes, you know, but it still is the preferred weapon with how up close and personal Breachers does get because, again, it still has that one-tap potential and with it having the fastest fire rate of all the assault rifles, it makes logical sense that most people still prefer the Vezin, even to this day. It's a... Uh... <clears throat> powerful tool in the meta arsenal and we see it here being utilized across the board at the high level maybe uh worth a video but also maybe not it's so commonly used at the uh, at that uh, at the high level in the meta but, but i mean we could do how long with the video it could be forever on the vezin <laughs> on the spreads and the tactics but uh that's another that's another time another note as for now we are getting ready for Outlaw to finally make their push. They've got a minute left on the clock. We're into a 4v3 advantage, or 5v3, excuse me, advantage very much to them as Proxy catches a wall bang. As the foam does go down, wall open, and Fem already inside. Proxy catches one, trying to rotate around, scoops up a second, and will go down to the hands of Toxic Drop to lock in Outlaw's first round. And like I said, there's an opportunity for offense to win on this map and there they just proved it locking in a solid full buy round for them that doesn't it does mean that we're into an, a, another full buy round here i think uh, if we look at <coughs> the scoreboard yeah fraternity have enough for a yeah, couple juices, of rifles so yeah juice is on 6150 that's enough for himself and somebody else but again he was the one having the technical issues here so uh oh, yeah. The rest of eternity staring at him dead in the eye, being like, hey, what are you doing? But it looks like he's finally back now. All should hopefully be well for the eternity squad. They'll be a full strength going into this uh, next round here. And, uh, you know, ultimately, it'll, I'm sure it'll be a showdown either way. But um, <laughs> I do wonder. We do Juice. have a full buy. <clears throat> Juice may have just bought those two rifles and checked them because he knows he's not going to be able to contribute much here. A really strange and unfortunate tech issue there that is essentially putting Eternity into a 4v5 in a lot of ways. And it's not obviously a spot when you're going up against Outlaw, who have been every step of the way contesting you. You know, they've, there's been no easy rounds. The 7-4 map 1 um, was was hard fought by Outlaw. Plenty of kills coming through on the, their side, so... To be down a player right now isn't exactly what Eternity need or can't afford, but that at least have a little bit of a lead. 2-1. Again, though, the full buy counter coming in. A nice nade. Look at that bounce off the side. Almost catches Plubra, but a quick heal puts him back to full HP. That could have been deadly, and I think it even caught uh, your op there a little bit, too. So... Nice utility coming out from Eternity to start things off. Barbara, trying to see if they can find something. Does pre-fire a little bit towards Proxy as he sprint peaks, but uh, Fem actually going to be able to pick up the first kill onto the ace. Uh, Penny Packer oh, does my. get that refrag and picks up a second as well on the Toxic drop there. Two minutes left on the clock is uh, Plubra trying to see if maybe they can be the equalizer here. But Penny Packer getting the shots off and bringing Plubra 1 HP. Side nade tossed in, doesn't go where it needs to, although this video does a nice smoke that blinds your op and stalls the offense from pushing in. That nade doesn't go where it needs to because they don't have vision. So a nice little bit of a <coughs> utility piece used to allow Penny to rotate and ultimately still covering this doorway quite nicely. Outlaw down to three, Eternity still left with four. Juice seems to be moving. <laughs> so their back is Penny picks up Ghost, and it's a 4v2 now up to your op and Blubra. Yeah, I mean, trying to deal with that left-handed peek that Penny's doing, as you saw there, I mean, that's that's so hard because they're showing like a sliver of their head, but if they were trying to peek it as a righty, they got to show their whole body. So, I mean, that's Penny's just in a really good position there, and, you know, picking up three kills, that makes light work. It really does, Proxy and Juice. Still holding things down and 50 seconds left on the clock. And there's a lot of utility blocking them. Even if they open up this door, this hall, uh, that wall to B, they still have a static emitter that's going to slow them up. Proxy gets rid of Plubber with an EMP in hand. And now it's across from Urop that also gets shut down by Juice. A beautiful peek out there. And, well, 
They, they, they are playing when it matters <laughs> and finding the kill to lock in the round win. 3-1 on map two here. The series looking good for eternity, but by no means over yet as Outlaw <clears throat> should be able to full buy here off of their uh, most recent success. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll get th only three rifles. Hmm. Yeah, uh, a big turn here for, uh, for eternity off of that round win. Yeah, I mean, Eternity seemed to be in a little bit better control this game as opposed to last game, you know. Again, I think, you know, they've won 66% of the time on this map. And sure, um, Outlaws have won five out of six times as they played on this map. But even then, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe Eternity has a trick or two up their sleeve or maybe it's just good teamwork. And I mean, I feel like we're seeing a little bit more of the latter. It's just, you know... They're, they're playing off their trades. They're able to get kills uncontested. And, you know, that's what's putting them ahead right now. It is indeed, as we do get into round number five. Some outlaws vault in to the outside of the A nice bit of defense pre-fire again. It's a staple of the top teams because it's, it's timing and guesswork. And quite frankly, it nets kills pretty often. <laughs> You know, the the, yeah. <clears throat> the guesswork free fire really does end up doing a great job of fending off uh, uh, that early aggression to some degree. You also got to be careful, though, to not use all of your ammo. You don't have infinite ammo in that pouch, and so you can't end up spending too much on that uh, to the wall and then not have enough to actually lock in the rest of the round. Static emitter down. Nade comes down the hallway, doesn't catch anyone, and again, good utility use from a track. Yeah, here comes an. Oh, that Nade bounces back the wrong way. That could have been huge for Proxy there, but uh, unfortunately, it bounces back. Penny Packer, though, able to be the guardian angel, picks up Toxic Drop, kind of stopping that push. And as we see one of the other Eternity players here, I think this is Penny, just kind of holding the, holding the angle there. Again, that. Really, really tight left-handed beat. And, you know, they are ready for it that time around. Penny does take a little bit of damage, and you got to wonder if they should try to peek again. But even then, the fact that they can hold it, they're still going to pre-fire it. They're just locking that part of the map down, and that that's another thing that Eternity is just doing a really good job of, is maintaining as mu much map control as possible. Oh, this tight lean there. And good job holding down the hallway. <clears throat> Again, the pre-fire doing wonders to stall out this offense. And in fact, they're completely rotating off of the push to B and sending over to A. And the rotations have worked for Outlaw. I like to see this team trying to call an audible. You don't see a lot of squads doing that. You know, I, I don't feel like I see a, a four-player commit to a, swa to a rotation to a different objective. It's... Uh, it's interesting. We'll see if it pays off because it's done pretty late in the round. 45 seconds left. Ace is here to pick up a double, not an ace. They almost had all four because look at how Europe and Femme are both below half HP and everyone shifted over to A side off of that now. So it's not going to be an easy entry. If they had found that first kill barreled into proxy, they would have had A site control. So again, I like the idea, but the ace holding their ground, doing their job on defense, finding that kill, <clears throat> huge for them on the eternity side. Yeah, and you got to wonder what's going to happen when you see four players lined up like that. Either, you know, the four of them have guns on the one person or the one person is just able to line up all four of them and take them out with, you know, a single mag there. And Ace almost does it, but uh, even the fact that Ace was able to get as much damage as they did, stopping that push, you know, that just kind of saves things there for eternity. And, uh, you know, they're up 4-1 now, and, and this could be... 6 1, 7 1 score line, you know, by the end of this game. Could be. Rifles carried through the next round from two players there on Outlaw's side. So, should be a close to full buy for them on the attack going into this final round of the first half. 5 1 would be pretty good, I think. On the defensive side, it just means a pistol round and then your advantage round off of your win. So, <clears throat> again, not where Outlaw want to be. They want this second point on offense, gives them a little bit of a buffer, and they ecoed off that last round to get to it, so hopefully they'll be able to uh, capitalize on that. They'll have the utility they need to smoke and frag their way through this initial defensive setup. 
And I do see some frags getting exchanged around here. So, yeah, it's going to be, again, a, a, the key to this team making their way through to this uh, bottom site. And, I mean, we do have the one lurk over on uh, Eternity there. I almost wonder if they, you know, they almost want to go to the window keep, but I don't think they actually are gonna. But, you know, door does get breach open, and they have three players already pre-firing the wall there. <laughs> so, uh... Well, we're going to get a little bit of information there with the drone. Um, and it's looking like they're going to be taking the bomb over towards the left side of this building. Maybe... Kind of hard to tell early on, but uh, you know, Outlaws taking it nice and slow. They want to see what they can do. Plubra is making some footsteps, so they're gonna at least attorney is gonna at least have that audio cue that you know the players are going around towards the B side. And uh, we do have two players over towards A still. Maybe they do a little bit of split play, but Plubra going inside by himself with the EMP. A little bit of a risky play there, but um, ultimately I think. Oh. Worked out. Fem picking up the first kill. Ooh, there comes a nade. Uh oh. Beautifully tossed from the ace as Mindbaker on the other side battles Ghost and Europe trying to make their way through and a little bit of a split push on this bottom floor that doesn't quite work out for Outlaws. 3v4 right now. And Mindbaker in a dangerous spot, but does have a little bit of support from Proxy. It was trying to get a little bit of an angle there. And again, this long hallway, a tough one to crack for Outlaw as Mindbaker pops out to shut things down. A 2v4 now for the Outlaw offense in this final round of the half. Yeah, you can see here, this is a similar hold that Eternity had when they were on the pistol round. They were able to use these pipes, these like tiny little pixel peaks to try to, you know, get early damage onto Outlaws, and they're doing a fantastic job of that. I mean, sure, that nade from Ace really just opening things up for Eternity, but uh, ultimately, I mean, look at this. How, do you, how are you going to know? Unless, unless you know this angle exists, you're not ready for this. It is a tight slice. That they are holding. Well, people know it exists now. <laughs> As they do defend this long hallway and toxic drop. Trying to get through here, but can't because it's simply too well guarded. They have don't have the nades or the smokes to root them out. They don't want to overcommit to the push and be caught out like several of their teammates have already. Toxic is going to camo their way up, though, and is going to try their hand at pushing as Proxy tries to bait out some shots. Mindbaker going to take some, and Toxic does get past the initial line of defense. Picks up one, has to swing the short corner for Mindbaker, and we're into a very close quarters battle. They find one over the shoulder. Oh, but not Mindbaker and Eternity. Survive what could have. I mean, that could have been that 4 2. That would have been a massive lock in comeback that would have enabled outlaw to potentially still win this map i think it's still on the table like we said when you swap sides uh going to the opposite end defense can be uh sometimes a little bit easier to prep for than offense can but i you know i imagine eternity are are very much well prepared here on arctic their win rate <clears throat> like we've been saying pretty strong so i think there's a real good chance that they could take this map in two if Outlaw is not careful. Yeah, I mean, it, I, in all honesty, this game comes down, or at least for Eternity, this game comes down to this pest round. If they're able yeah. to secure the pest round, they probably might as well have the 7 1, unless, you know, <laughs> unless Outlaw <laughs> comes up with something. Uh huh. Yeah, we say that now, and I, but I've seen already, you know, especially in that last F3 Acer match, some crazy eco wins. So <laughs> yeah. it's uh, it's possible. It's on the table. It's something that can happen. These players are very good at hitting their shots with the pistols. And so, uh, you know, you can never count them out. But as we do swap sides and reset economies, we do go back to the pistols here for our back half of the map, potentially back half of the final map. If Eternity have anything to say about it. Drone there getting wasted. That's a that's a decent battery time spent for it sitting on the outside of the window. It does eventually work its way in and won't find much. Nobody on the initial setup there. Fan, if anything, tucked into this top floor and I suppose gonna be a roaming threat later where they'll push down the stairs 
on this back side and try and disrupt the offense. The drone again, a double drone. Interesting investment coming through from the Eternity side to gain their information. Yeah, I think Eternity just really want to play this one carefully and try to get as much information as possibly can get in order to, you know, make the best attack that they can. We see Ghost and Proxy both taking a headshot there. They're both at, like, about 25 HP roughly and uh you know so even even in these rounds things look pretty equal and then one team ultimately just kind of you know takes it ahead and we've seen eternity do that a few more times plubra pick up the first kill onto mind baker there with the headshot still also at 25 hp so a couple players over in the outlaw side weak but a good opening pick penny packer able to be the equalizer there picking up them not sure from where oh the backside fem was <clears throat> on that top floor rotation trying to flank so a good hold from penny to shut that down and it keeps us into an honest 4-4 here this afternoon in the pistol set as eternity send a rotation and it seems like it was audioly picked up by your op and toxic and your ops here to catch a double they'll go down to penny on the short corner toxic looking for more as they do catch penny unaware and it puts us into a 1v2 with juice alone on site here at a getting pinged by plubra they could easily overwhelm Juice with a double a two player swing, but Toxic will take the charge and catch the kill. And Outlaw, a big pistol round, like you said, locked in here. This this really does extend their life substantially. They can now invest, potentially lock in another point, and you know, <clears throat> the comeback train is in full effect at that point. Yeah, I mean even juice right at the end he was able to pick up the headshot but just yeah. having that health advantage ultimately allowed uh allowed outlaws to prevail and you know they were just able to get more of the kills right in the end there but uh yeah i mean that was very much a pistol round that they needed and uh i think we only have one pheasant on the field right now they they want to play it as carefully as possible but uh or maybe two again scoreboard we don't know uh, yeah, i don't but, know i think there's uh, Let's look at the map. Let's do the map. Yeah, there's 25 left on up in the ghost. And so we can assume. Let's check. There we go. That, yep, there's one. And where's the other one? I think they both just had them there. Ghost and up, both with uh, rifles in hands. It's a big buy. A double Vezin buy is basically everything you can put in on your defensive side and we don't you don't see it as often because it is risky it has its risks you know <laughs> if you lose even one it's uh it's it's too dangerous you can often kind of turtle around your one vezin if you only buy one but when there's two it's just again kind of a uh obviously you're that much stronger as well so you know it's the risk reward that i love to see in this game is ace catches plubra out i don't believe plubra was one that was holding on to a rifle so it won't be too much of a loss as Ghost does peek out and connect with that uh, killer and turns things into a 4-4. Yeah, I mean, being able to pick up a kill even with the starter pistol alone, <laughs> the only pistol that, the only pistol besides the automatic one that takes three headshots now, I mean, that's that's definitely good because, you know, you're not, you're not spending any money on the starter pistol, so, you know, just free eco for you. Hold down by your op here. Has the other Vezin. And so they split their Vezins to B and A. As Ghost shuts down Penny Packer trying to rotate over towards A with that other Vezin. Your op might not see the action that they were expecting as Proxy, Juice, and Mindbaker are kind of uh, stalled out here in the middle point as Ghost picks up another Juice. Able to pop out with a Viper in hand. And find the kill there, but I don't think again that's a rifle that's not down. So your op and, Pe and Penny are still both holding on to the, <clears throat> or not Penny. Um... Oh gosh, now I'm getting confused. Ghost, ghost <laughs> I believe. No, Ghost isn't even alive. <laughs> Crazy. Um. Anyways, actually able to take out Fan, but Juice does take the headshot there, and they might trade the gun there. As yep. Proxy's going to take the Viper there, try to see if they can make something happen, but I think both Vezins are still in play. They are going to be able to get that EMP plant. Here comes a nade, though. Not able to connect, but just reaching his hand out, trying to see. And look at this. Toxic Drop getting up close and personal. Has the Vezin and takes the short quarters fight. 
close quarters fight. Europe and Toxic both here to fend off this team. And what great teamwork from both of them, holding their angles and catching the kills they need to lock in a turn. Or excuse me, Outlaw, another round on defense. They go up 3 5 now. And much like map one, this Outlaw squad is here to fight. And they very much are trying to work a comeback right now. And here's the thing, too, with Juice investing in that Viper in that second round. I mean, they're not really going to have the money to uh, full buy here. I mean, they might go on a Candelo, and, you know, if we see that money drop to 100 right away, they're at, yeah, there it is. There's the Candelo right there. So, um, well, actually, they're second guessing. No, they're. I'm just going to let them do their no, thing. I think it's but... a good idea. <laughs> come in. You're right. Uh, I mean, yeah. uh, frankly, though, it has. <clears throat> in the hands of a top in the hands of someone that's in the, anywhere in the top five honestly it's a uh, a weapon that is pretty effective you know it's a one shot headshot from I think any any range uh, yep and so it's the most powerful mid to long range weapon and if you're a good shot which all of these players are in this game in this lobby then you're you know you're it's a dangerous threat that's that's why again even with the pistols in hand it's you're still only two bullets away from death you know that they find the one two punch to you at the right range then you're gone a three. exactly and i think the other i think the other thing too is the candela has a little bit more wall pen power versus like the vezin so you might even be able to get a lucky headshot through a wall if mm. you know somebody decides to get antsy and pre-fire through but uh Anyways, we'll see if it does actually wind up getting used as we get into our ninth round here. Um, Outlaws, or actually, excuse me, Eternity, trying to see where they want to go. Ghost taking a lot of damage there early on through the wall, presumably. There. Proxy is going to make way up for a little bit of foam and will survive <laughs> the onslaught of fire through that wall. We only get the foam down, tosses it off to Mindbaker. I think it's always interesting how they how they will exchange stuff like that. You know, it's it's oh no, Proxy kept on it. There's the foam opening up and here comes the push. This ghost finds juice over the top. A nade comes lobbed in it. Oh almost Norway there for Proxy survives. And now a challenge over A as Ace picks up one on the backside. Toxic Worried about the flank as this full court press is coming in from Eternity. A 4 right now on the attack. You know, Ace picking up two huge kills right there. That's going to do a lot for Eternity. I think he was over towards the flank or over somewhere else. So now Outlaws, their attention is split between, you know, two, three different angles that they got to try to worry about. And, you know, that's not a good position to be in. And, I mean, look at this. Ace and uh, somebody else are wrapping up behind the rest of Outlaws. And that's not what, that's not the situation they really want to be in. Proxy going to fake the bomb plant there and get out. Toxic Drop does pick up a kill, but Ace gets the trade. Ghost takes out Mindbaker, and they know Ace is behind. Oh, oh nice headshot coming out from Ghost. A cheeky angle there, too. As now it's a one versus two for proxy to try to make something happen again taps the bomb gets the first kill ghost doesn't have the health advantage though and now one versus one 50 seconds left proxy just to bait out ghost to peak here ghost knows that he has to go for the plant he has to play patiently here and proxy has to make the move but proxy doing a really good job of again baiting out these outlaws players and he's gonna spam through the wall a little bit 35 seconds left doesn't have too much time left but he's trying to see what he can do and he's gonna swing the quarter and proxy gonna clutch it up for eternity there a huge kill there a celebratory spike of their rifle that i'm sure they'll quickly pick back up because <laughs> you don't want to leave that on the floor but a huge win getting locked in there that puts eternity up to series point really nicely played by proxy on the baits the double kill to take that and win it that is uh that's a, <clears throat> a very good play and a solid job from the eternity offense to lock themselves in to again series point coming up here not where outlaw want to be but it is where all the connoisseurs thought they would be <laughs> again like an 82 to 2 vote on the connoisseur in favor of eternity this afternoon i was anticipating maybe a third map quite frankly based off of how well outlaws been playing and it's still in the cards if they can tie map two they can push this to a third 
Uh, and that's something that Eternity has experienced plenty of. So we'll see if Eternity can actually lock in this final point. Or if they're going to struggle, like they have in the past, to finally get the map and series win. Yeah, I mean, so far they seem to be doing a pretty stellar job overall. I mean, you can tell... The teamwork's there, of course. They're a top four team. It needs to be. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're just doing a really good job of just playing off each other, not getting too antsy over anything. And, you know, they're just they're just getting, uh, as I say, that Proxy's getting the first kill. So, you know, he's freely come alive this game. We didn't see too much from Proxy on the hideout game, but, you know, he's, he's definitely doing a lot better this game. And, you know, the scoreboard shows it. And... And especially that clutch round, last round definitely oh, shows it. And yeah, you know, so. Let's see what the play looks like here. Nice flash on the ghost. The drone doing good work of identifying that defense and Mindbaker utilizing that flash opportunity to cross. We'll see how much that ends up helping them. And if Ghost is going to be ready for Mindbaker on that corner as time ticks down, but plenty of minutes left on the clock. That static emitter really a disrupting element in allowing this team to push forward. Yeah, I think Ghost there kind of held his hands up for a sec, wondering how he was taking bullets. But, uh, you know, he, they were kind of shooting each other through the corner. He does get picked off, and that's going to open things even further for Eternity. As they look to attack this B site here, minute 30 left. Plubra does get the kill onto the ace through the wall. So that's going to equalize things just a little bit here. But once again, we're seeing the same. As I say, that Plubra immediately shuts that down. And Proxy looking for the kill with the blind fire there. And to uh, Toxic Drop is going to take a little bit more of an aggressive position. Minute 13 on the clock. And I believe it's a three versus three. Juice takes out your op, bringing it to a three versus two. And, uh, Eventually, they'll take this B-site, or I think they actually might consider a rotate. Yeah, it's looking like that's what they want to do. Toxic drop up on the couch here. 55 seconds left, and uh, this end round could be closer than we think. <laughs> it could be. We'll have to see if Eternity can lock it in. Again, a 3v2 for Eternity right now. Don't believe the scorecard. Or do, I guess. It's, it's right, actually. But uh, just wrong names. Anyway, Toxic here on the short corner is going to peek out and catch his proxy with the full clip. Juice gets pushed down by Plubber on the backside. And as the wall opens up for Penny Packer, they're full health and alone. Two bullets away from winning this series in the map as Toxic tries to rotate back towards EMP. And 15 seconds left for Penny to work with. He's got a Kandil. He just has to tap him in the body. He doesn't even have to get a headshot here, but Toxic Drop did actually heal, and he's going to... Oh, no, hold up. Penny Packer is going to be turning on Toxic Drop, but three seconds left. Doesn't have the time. Is he going to still try and stick the plant for the cash? Because of course, but... Didn't want yeah. that loss, but... Outlaws are still here. Four, six. This final point. Sometimes the hardest thing to get, especially after you've invested... Into the round before. I don't know where their economies are at. Yeah, not good. They're going to have to eco this round. They're going to have to eco this round. And Outlaws are also not exactly in a good spot either on their economy. I think they are also might be partial buying too. Yeah, we're going to get a, a very interesting kind of partial buy round on both sides. And that's the kind of the thing you got to worry about too. You know, when you're when you're bringing it down to one v ones, and when you're just trading rounds over and over and over again, that does a lot of economic damage. And just you know, again, we're seeing Candelos coming out. We're not seeing full Vezins, full Util. Like none of these teams have really been able to just get super far ahead of the other. At least in this second half, yeah. uh, we're seeing we're seeing Outlaws really making. A comeback here and you know i don't want to jinx anything either way but you know you know could we see a tie maybe could we see eternity take it maybe you know it, it really comes down to these next couple of rounds Ooh, and the full court press and penny packer leading the charge catches one out the gate and a nade tossed and bounced in luckily doesn't get the right angle on the juice and linebaker who are still safely tucked into the tight corner of this B site, waiting for Ghost to pop up. And there's the pistol shot. Juice will spring up and surprise Ghost. They didn't know there was two tucked in. They need to continue to keep this pressure on, but they can't as they're fended off by Femme 
and the rest of this defense. And with three left alive from Outlaw, they'll carry their investment in that round through to the next. They're looking good on economy, but again, an eco round from in Eternity and the all important final round, round 12 coming up here, Yellow Hat. Quite frankly, I wasn't expecting it. But it's, uh, again, something that Eternity have seen a lot of in the series they've played um, so far uh, in, in this season. Yeah, and I mean, when you're a 5-6, you know, if you're, if you're outlaws here, if you're the underdog team, do you choke on the pressure or do you, do you push through? Because, I mean, in theory, you know, if you're outlaws, you're taking a map off of eternity. You're taking a map off a of top yeah. four team. Yeah. Like that's a great feeling. You've got nothing to worry about. Just play the game. But if you're eternity that your backs are against the walls right now, because you're being, you're potentially being forced into a map number three. And you know, you got to wonder, are they going to be able to handle the pressure? Are, you know, that's what makes a lot of these top teams is they're able to handle that pressure in these tense moments. And uh, we'll see what happens come this round. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of connoisseurs are a little concerned right now as Eternity, uh, again, I think a tie, it impacts you negative. You can't vote for a tie, so I think it counts as like you not getting the vote right. So a tie also would be pretty bad for both both sides. It would be bad for 85 people. But uh, either way, it is our final round of this map and we'll find out if we're going to a third or not yellow hat right here in the next two and a half minutes eternity are going to tell us if we're going to a map three or not as they push in to this site this long hallway that's been a plague for at least outlaw is one that isn't really heavily guarded at all by the outlaw defense despite how much trouble a defender here was giving them they haven't invested in one themselves and it maybe is a potential opportunity for this team to push through and work with towards A that uh, could be bad news for Outlaw. Obviously, A is definitely on the menu for this team. Yeah, I mean, Eternity have already taken, you know, those, uh, that area that they were so strongly defending and, you know, being able to have that and, you know, take all this map control from Outlaws. It's not looking great for Outlaws, but as I say that, your mob gets proxy in the face with a pheasant bullet and, uh, you know, uncontested on health too. Didn't take a bullet from proxy at all. Nade comes in. Penny Packer taking a little bit of damage to the hand there. Nade does not connect. Minute 20, so the time is ticking and we see one of the Outlaws players holding this hallway here. Mind Baker gonna be attentive to it. Does take out a ghost there. Opens up things for eternity a little bit. Puts it back to a four on four. We've got a minute five left on the clock and we see a little bit of a rotation coming out from the defense as you know, that part of the map is now exposed and they have to try to find Mind Baker, but he picks up another one again, uncontested. And so eternity have now shifted the round into their favor as the EMP does go down. Packer here to defend Juice Ace. Everyone here on board. Femme, the lone defender. No, Plumbra is still alive on the backside, so they could spring their trap. It's a matter of timing, though. As the time does tick down, they'll shut down Mindbaker on the back end, and they need to rejoin the rest of their squad here off of what was a successful pickup. They need to find Juice and then enable for the duo push. But again, the clock is ticking. They have to push up. Femme is not able to get Ace or Penny. Where is Plubra not here in time on the rotation? And Eternity are going to just barely take, well, they're pretty common with three alive and an EMP plant. They will lock in their map number two win and the series. But man, what a fight from the underdogs this afternoon. The outlaw squad ranked 12th. We love to see the, that coming out of that team. And I've been saying it, the top 20 is pretty competitive. You know, it's it, it really is. When you get up into that, even top 20, you are a pretty solid team. And Outlaws definitely showing that they deserve at least that 12th spot. I think they could very easily contest some teams uh, in, a, in, a, in a few lower ranks. But a really good job from them and not a loss to hang their head at by any means. No, I mean, in fact, if anything, I think they've learned quite a lot from uh, from this game today. I mean, a 7-5 scoreline, even a 7-4 scoreline is pretty respectable yeah. 
you know, especially for, you know, your fir first or second time really going up against like a top five team, you know, I'm sure they'll watch back this, uh, this VOD, this cast, and, you know, they'll learn a lot from, you know, Power Eternity approaching, you know, their offense side. How are they, you know, what angles are they holding on defense? You know, maybe try some new strategies or what, but I mean, you know, even then, Outlaws, they were doing a really good job just even yeah. getting trades, you know, making it even. I think Eternity, though, they just, you know, they're just a more experienced group together and they just had a little bit more of the firepower. And we saw, you know, some of the individual performance, one from Proxy in game two with yeah. some of those clutches and some of those opening picks. And then the ace in game number one just soaring high above the rest of it in terms of kills. But um, even then, I mean, both teams working great together and I'm interested to see you know where both of these teams are going to be going you know come yeah. the end of the season I, I know at eternity definitely looking uh still like a solid squad here doing good to fight back against some adversity and ultimately a well-coordinated team from outlaw but that will be it for us here on the casting desk again i appreciate everybody stopping by please do hit that subscribe button check out uh, vrml.com slash vrmlcon for more info about that july 20th and 21st in denver colorado and a quick shout out to our sponsors hyperx pro tube and of course triangle factory for supporting us and helping us bring breachers to you at a competitive space uh it's i'm having a blast with the new update outside of a few little bugs on the spectate client it's uh it looks great as well and hopefully everyone's enjoying the uh the smoother casts i think the cams look a lot better in my opinion so I'm very happy with the stuff they've added on our end and happy with how the game's been updated recently. I'm looking forward to the future, and I'm looking forward to VR MLCon in July. So that will be it for us here on the desk. My name is Ben Nightfire with two E's, my co-caster Yellow Hat. We'll see you all, I don't know, uh, next week <laughs> as we're wrapping up this week and week eight. But until then, stay classy. Brought to you by Helga, the eSports Manager, Triangle Factory. Thanks for watching VRML. <laughs>